Now, Lucy, one of the things that this review highlights is how we've seen an increase in the number of young girls with gender dysphoria or questioning the body that they were born in. Yes, the review points out that, uh, let's say, 10 or 15 years ago, there were only really a handful of people that would present themselves to the services and by and large they would be uh, gender born males. But what seems to have happened certainly in the last five to 10 years is what can only really be described as an explosion of uh, birth females actually presenting. And they're presenting at a time of great radical physiological change. And historically, we know that quite a lot of young females, as they approach adolescence, they go through quite a stressful experience because of the bodily and hormonal changes that really signify that shift from childhood to adulthood. And it, it is in it only really in human species that you actually have such a, a big period, a chunk of time for adolescence to in a way have that transition. And so there are questions to be asked about why this wasn't, why this particular change wasn't flagged up because nothing really has changed in terms of human development. So why did we actually start to see uh, really an explosion of young girls presenting at a time of great emotional vulnerability? And as I say, adolescence is very normal, but it does tend to throw up quite a lot of stresses, particularly mm. young girls. And this may have been yet another example of that. I think it is important to stress that and that, that then what this report is recommending is clearly extreme caution in these cases. Although it is important to also recognise this is still a vanishingly small proportion of all children overall. Over 15 million children in the United Kingdom, 3,000 going through these gender services. That's 0.002% of it. Yes, but that's where we're in the danger of looking at noise versus volume, that actually quite a lot of the, the ideology around this received disproportionate amounts of attention in the media and in discussions more widely. And therefore, even though it was only a small number of, of children, actually the ideas around it were reaching into parliament there were huge articles written about it documentaries made about it. it it became something that was really a big part of the culture war and this in a way is what dr hillary cass is really flagging up is the way in which children ended up being caught up in that almost used as a as a culture war football because it then became something much larger than these children themselves Yes, and I think it's important not to dismiss this on the grounds that, it, oh, it only affects a handful of people, because if you look at the statistics, you see that back in 2011, there were 250 referrals to a gender identity development service. Ten years later, more than 5,000, and of that group, two-thirds were female looking, uh, who, who were feeling, who were gender questioning, so looking to potentially be, become a boy. So there is an explosion. It is a genuine issue and it is something that every corner of our society needs to handle, whether it's schools, whether it's health services, which this review concentrates on, whether it's parenting, families, it covers everything. Yes, but as the review points out, even though there has been that explosion, it was only dealt with in one particular very narrow focused way and what she's arguing for is a much broader approach and of course speaking as someone who works clinically with adults every so often but not very often but every so often i will have someone who will come to me for therapy who, who has been in that situation since childhood and nobody really listened to them so the consequences of not taking it seriously for the small number of individuals concerned is very problematic. So this isn't about saying, oh, it's it's a problem that doesn't really exist. That's not what we're saying here, but what Hilary Cass really is highlighting is that there is needed a much more nuanced approach to this. And what we saw historically was a very one size fits all model based purely on one piece of research coming out of the Netherlands. And actually, what we really need to see is some is far more research for the for the longer term 
uh, issues that you've raised, but also in the moment, what are we offering our young people? They've been failed in this system. They've been channeled or funneled into certain treatment that perhaps wasn't relevant for them. And what we really need is a much more immediate frontline approach so that when someone does present, you are giving them mental health assessment immediately so that you can then set them on a more appropriate path. Well, yeah, this has been exactly. an incredibly reasonable conversation. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Lucy Beresford, 